Hello, everyone, and welcome to another short but hopefully sweet lessons episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. This one comes for, comes to me from a recent a recent episode I recorded. I'm not even sure if it's gone gone live yet. You know what? It probably has by now. But it's something that it's a again, it's another one of those something that I knew, but now I know in a different way, thanks to a coach putting it in a particular way. You know, <laughs> I'm sure you're all very familiar with that <laughs> with that experience. But it's a something I was thinking about was, and I, I basically end up talking about this almost every day, how one of a coach's most important jobs is a very, very simple one. Ask questions. Now, <laughs> the nature of those questions, it could be simple, they could be complex, they could be surface, they could be deep. They're usually relatively simple. It tends to be the simple questions that are the most powerful, especially ones that you insist on getting an answer for. And this is where this, is where this lesson comes in for me. This insistence where it's, you know, maybe you ask a question and you, you know, someone demurs or they deflect, so they're not really ready to answer. And so you're like, okay, and maybe you continue the conversation for a little bit. And then you ask the same exact question again. Maybe you put the emphasis on a different syllable or you move the words around a little bit, but it's essentially the same question. Now, when you insist on a question, because you know, it's an important question, it's one that you know, your client needs to answer, they need to, they need to find their way to their answer to this question to move on to the next one, or to move on to the next step, you know this, but maybe they don't know this yet. And so what can sometimes happen? And this is sometimes this is out of your control, but this is something you can definitely be aware of, is that your insistence on an answer can feel to your client, like they're being judged. Sometimes when, when people are just asked questions, they feel this pressure on them. And when people feel pressure like that, they maybe feel challenged. Now, a coach, one of a coach's most important jobs is also to challenge their clients. <laughs> You're not really gonna get anywhere throwing softballs all day. There are going to be some hardball questions. There are gonna be some tough conversations, some challenging decisions, and some challenging questions that are gonna need some answers. And that can sometimes maybe even often, rub certain people the wrong way. Um, and how it rubs them the wrong way? Sometimes they'll internalize that. They'll feel like they're being judged in some way, which is neither here nor there. You can use the terminology however you choose to term it. But whenever anybody feels judged, there's a tendency to clam up or to get defensive, lash out, yada, yada. There's a lot of different ways we react to such behavior or we, we allow ourselves to react, I should say. But it's so important to be to be challenging without judgment, without letting judgment guide the conversation, guide the interaction, guide the relationship, making sure that the, the person you're coaching, the person you're interacting with, they know that you're not passing judgment on them, but that you know this is an important question to be asked, that you wouldn't be asking it otherwise, and that you're going to work with them. You're going to insist with them. You're going to apply that pressure to them until an answer comes forth. And they're going to thank you for it. <laughs> As you well know, once you get there, they will thank you for challenging them and insisting on answers to the important questions, which are so often the simplest ones. But this is something that I've experienced from, from many of the coaches I've talked to. This is one of those, I mean, I suppose some, some of you come by it naturally. Maybe it's just like a skill that you've always had, but almost every coach I know has at the very least worked on and developed this skill, that ability to to ask and to hold those questions, hold space for the answers, insist on the questions, rephrase, but not change the question so that the next question can be moved on to, the next step can be moved on to. It's really, it's really amazing. It's, it's, it looks simple because I think coaches have largely mastered <laughs> this process. I'm always, I'm always amazed and impressed when I'm on the receiving end or I'm just a witness <laughs> to this. So challenging without judgment or without things shifting into a place of judgmentalism, being insistent with the important questions, which again, are often the simplest ones. But anyway, that concept of challenge without judgment, that's been, that's risen to the top um, of, of my head and my heart recently. And so I wanted to share that with you, um, share some of my reflections, some of my thoughts. Um, and yeah, I'm going to keep noodling on it because it's definitely something, something that I have different kinds of reactions to as I move through life. So Anyway, challenge without judgment, simple questions, insistence, um, all very important attributes of good, even great coaching. So thank you for listening. Um, thank you for conversing with me, indulging me. And I will talk to you again very soon.